What's up? What's happening? And welcome to Ask the Maats. My name is Iyana Maat, and I'm one half of that dynamic duo that consists of myself and my soulmate, Ayize Maat. Today, though, I am here flying solo, and I want to speak on something that's been on my spirit lately because I've just been seeing it a lot. I've been uh, seeing it in the questions that we receive um, and some, some things that have seen said in my in my uh, atmosphere. Just in general, I have been seeing this whole black and white phenomenon. I've been um, experiencing people, uh, particularly in relationships and in marriages and some of the atmospheres I've been in lately, um, operating in this whole rigid thought process, um, absolute thinking. And today, what I want to share with you is this, for you to meditate and marinate on. Absolute thinking, rigidity, inflexibility can and will absolutely it can destroy your marriage and, 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 and it can kill otherwise healthy relationships that have so much potential. And, um, you know, I just want to really not go into it too much because we're going to speak on this um, in, in the coming future and get into some particular issues that people have sent us where I see this, this absolute thinking happening and really kind of delve into those issues to kind of bring home what's going on. But I, I really want people to understand this, whether you know in your heart when you hear me talking about this and when you saw the title and you clicked on this, mm, I've been guilty of this or people have, have accused me of this and that's why you clicked on it or you have a partner who does this, wherever you fall, um, I want you to be able to, to take away today what is the underlying issue that's happening when people are engaged in inflexibility and rigidity. What does it serve and why is it happening? Um, and there's so many ways and so many different um, uh, ways that it comes out, right? So we see it when, um, you know, we have a, a, a woman who um, is in a relationship with a man and every time she talks to somebody when they're out, she just says hello or she sees somebody she knows. For that person, absolutely, that means that that she can be getting ready to step out on on him or that person is going to try to holler at her, right? Every single time, rigid thought, rigid thought. Um, we see it when the, the husband uh, in a relationship um, says that, you know, our children have to uh, experience certain things a particular way. They've got to be involved in this sport and they've got to be able to practice these kinds of um, extracurricular activities because it makes this type of child grow up into this type of adult. And there's no other way. Absolute rigidity, absolutely white uh, and black or black and white thinking. We see it um, when we have uh, women who say to their man, you know, this is the way we do it here in this house. I don't get down any other way because this is where my mother did it. And if you go outside of what my mother did um, and what I'm saying we need to do, then everything is going to be messed up. And we will, you know, <laughs> whatever the situation is, we're just going to be a hot mess. Absolute thinking, black and white thinking, rigidity, inflexibility. Why does this happen? Today, I want you to understand that when you are engaged in inflexibility and rigid thought, it is because of anxiety. When we attach ourselves to one way to do something or one way to experience something, then that gives us a sense of security. That's all human beings. Because then we don't have to consider multiple options. We don't have to consider multiple outcomes. And we don't have to take a risk and be uncomfortable in those different experiences that might require us to do something different. And so when you're doing that, it's because of anxiety. So I want to be able to lift up today that if that's you or someone you know, it's because you're anxious. It's because you're nervous and you don't feel safe. And that comes from a lot of different reasons, from our childhood, and from lack of faith, uh, from lack of assuredness, from lack of having a good foundation, whether it be a spiritual foundation or um, good moral foundation, you know, not being grounded, kind of feeling loose in the world. And so if I feel loose and I don't feel anchored, then I've got to establish something to anchor myself. And so I, I, I anchor myself to rigid thought. <laughs> 
and, and that's not the solution. And so I want to lift that up because if you're someone who's dealing with someone like that, the, the first thing you want to do when, when someone is really inflexible uh, and they're rigid in their thinking and in their practice and what they want to do, you know, you, you want to slap them upside the head. I know I do. You know, you want to lash out at them. What's wrong with you? But the, the thing that you can do, whether it's you dealing with that person or you dealing with yourself, is, is have compassion. Have compassion. Because if you think about the fact that the person is anxious, that they're experiencing anxiety, and oftentimes it's anxiety that is not um, uh, felt on a, on a surface level. They don't really understand what it is. It's just a habit of, of the way they're being, but they're really anxious. Then can't we have some compassion and say, hey, you know, tell t- talk to me about why you think that is the only way it can be done or this is the only way that we can experience the next level in our lives as a couple or whatever the case may be. Have some compassion. Start there because truly anxiety comes from being afraid. Anxiety and fear come from not feeling safe. And so if you can provide safety in the context of your relationship, if you can provide safety by being a listening ear and being understanding, then that's the first step to helping someone to take that grip they have on that rigid anchor, that rigid thought, and start to let it go and open themselves up to the fact that, as we always say here, there is more than one way. That's all I have for today, y'all. We're going to come back to this because this is a very seep, a seep, a deep and significant area that I see popping up in all kinds of ways in relationships And I think that we need to address it further. Hope that this has been of help to you, enlightened you a little bit today, made you think about where you need to release control and think about what that's really all about in the first place. But at the end of the day, none of this is going to work if you don't stop playing and start pushing.